So we're going to work out number 29, and we're going to find critical numbers, if any, find the open intervals where it's increasing and decreasing, and apply the first derivative test to identify all relative extrema. So critical numbers are where the derivative is equal to 0, so we need to take the derivative of this chain rule problem. So 2 thirds times x plus 2 to the minus 1 third times the derivative of x plus 2. Then we do have to do this so crucial step of writing it as a fraction since we have negative exponents. So 2 thirds, that's already as a fraction. And the x plus 2 is going to go down and join the 3. So critical numbers happen where the first derivative is equal to 0 which doesn't give us anything, and where the derivative is undefined, which is the denominator, divide by 3, cube both sides, and subtract 2. So we have a critical number of negative 2. Now we're going to check it out on our interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. So we have negative infinity to negative 2 and negative 2 to infinity. And we'll check it and the derivative. A number between those numbers is negative 3. And a number in this interval is 0. Always use 0 if you can. Now into the first derivative right here, let's put a negative 3. So a negative, so we have a positive in the numerator. And in the denominator, negative 3 plus 2 is a negative. So I am going to get a negative in the denominator. So this is negative, which means it's decreasing. Plugging in a 0 gives us a positive in the numerator. Um, 0 plus 2 is 2. It's all going to be positive in the denominator. So this interval is increasing. And then decreasing looks like that, increases looks like that, so that's a relative min at negative 2. Next one you all asked for was 31. f of x equals, didn't I omit 31? 5 minus the absolute value of x minus 5. So I just checked facts, and in my book I wrote omit 31, but I did not put it onto facts. I'm sorry. We have not learned how to take a derivative of absolute value yet. That's a rule we'll get in a later chapter. So I meant to omit that one. And that brings us to 49, I think you all asked for. Actually, I'm going to do 45. No one asked for one of these. I just wanted to do a trick question. It says, consider the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Find the open interval on which it's increasing or decreasing. Apply the first derivative test to identify all relative extrema. So we need to take the derivative. But before we do, we should write it in the friendlier way. So the derivative of this cosine function that is squared, it's going to be treated like it's an x squared. So this is um, a chain rule problem. So it's 2 times the cosine of 2x to the first power times the derivative of the cosine of 2x times the derivative of the angle. That's a long coiling chain. You had an x squared problem, and then when you looked at the derivative of this, you had a cosine problem, and then it had an inside part. So we had to take the derivative that way with chain rule. So it's 2 times a negative 1 times a 2, so that's a negative 4. Cosine 2x sine 2x. Um, critical numbers happen where the derivative is equal to 0 or undefined. And we're going to check out where this is equal to 0. You're going to set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve them. That doesn't give us anything. So you're going to say, where is cosine equal to 0? And cosine is equal to 0 here. 
in here. So instead of x equals those values, it's 2x equals pi over 2 and 2x equals 3 pi over 2. And multiply by a half to clear that 2. And x is pi over 4 for one critical number. And x is 3 pi over 4. Likewise, here you're asking yourself, where is sine 0? And sine is 0 here and here. So that means 2x is 0 and 2x is pi. So x is 0 and x is pi over 2. So these are our critical numbers. We're on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. And we're not supposed to include 0. So because this is the open interval, so we're not going to put that on there. We have pi over 4, pi over 2, and 3 pi over 4. We need to have these in the right order that they appear on on the unit circle so that our answer turns out right. We get our intervals right. Okay, so we're going to test between 0 and pi over 4 between pi over 4 and pi over 2, between pi over 2 and 3 pi over 4, and between 3 pi over 4 and 2 pi. So an angle in between 0 and pi over 4 would be pi over 6. An angle here would be um, pi over 3. You can just get these off the unit circle. An angle here would be um, want to look, but I might have to. I think it's 1, 2, 3, 4 pi over 6, so 2 pi over 3. And this one, I might just check. Oh, that's a big interval, 3 pi over 4. So I could check um, 3 pi over 2. Okay, so you are going to go to your original problem And I would put that into y equals, and I would be in radian mode. And so what we're doing is we're doing the cosine of 2 times the angle squared. I guess we could use our unit circle, actually. That's the cosine of pi over 3 squared. Pi over 3 is 60 cosine of 60 is a half, and a half squared is, well, it's positive. <laughs> it's positive, but a half squared is a fourth, but it's positive, so we're increasing. Pi over 3, that's the cosine of 2 times pi over 3 squared. That's the cosine of 2 pi over 3. 2 pi over 3 is positive x in this quadrant. So cosine is negative, but when I square it, it's going to be positive. Um, actually, all of these answers, when we square them, will be positive, won't they? Yeah, this is always increasing. So there are no relative mins or maxes. So I just double checked this problem and um, I forgot something. Um, I forgot when we were solving this cosine of 2x equals 0 and we found that 2x would be at pi over 2 and 2x would also be at 3 pi over 2. I forgot to consider, because this was a double angle, that we have, um, we have to think about the period. So. You remember how we used to do plus 2n pi? So when we solve this by dividing by 2, we divide that 2n pi by 2 also. So it's pi over 4 plus n pi. And if n equals 1, 
then that's pi over 4 plus pi, which is 5 pi over 4. That's another number we need to put on our interval to test between. And um, if n is 2, I don't think it'll give us another plus 2 pi. That's 8. No, that's too big. And then also, let me get rid of this stuff. And then also, when we do that same little trick here, and you divide everything by 2, you get x is 3 pi over 4 plus n pi. And if n equals 1, then that's 3 pi over 4 plus pi, which is 4 pi over 4. So that's 7 pi over 4. That also will count as a critical number that we need to put on our, our intervals. So um, it actually won't be just increasing, 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 because when you add the 5 pi over 4 right here, and the, what was the other one? 7 pi over 4. Then um, you'll get some different intervals.